this is a government not just in turmoil, in open revolt. The Immigration Minister thinks the Prime Minister is failing because apparently nobody will listen to his secret plan. (laughs) The former Home Secretary thinks he's failing because of his magical thinking. The current Home Secretary thinks he's failing. He even took time out of his busy schedule insulting people in the North East to admit he agrees with Labour. The Prime Minister seems to be the only person on the Tory benches without his own personal immigration plan. (laughs) Clearly, his own side don't have any faith in him. Why should the public? Mr Speaker, it's it's really a bit rich to hear about this from someone who described all immigration law as racist, who literally said it was a mistake to control immigration. We have taken steps and we will take further steps, which is why recent estimates of immigration show that it's slowing. It's why next year the immigration health surcharge will increase by over two-thirds. It's why immigration fees are going up by up to 35%. But, Mr Speaker, one, one of his own members of his front bench said that having a target isn't sensible. Right? It's no surprise, Mr Speaker, to have people like this, because this is the person, Mr Speaker, while we're taking all these measures that he opposed, this is the person who stood on a platform and promised to defend free movement. <laughs> on their watch, migration has just trebled and is giving the House a lecture about targets. He's lost in la-la land. <laughs> There can be few experiences more haunting for the members opposite than hearing this Prime Minister claim that he's going to sort out a problem. (laughs) First, he said he'd get the NHS waiting list down. Uh, They went up. Unabashed by that, he said he'd get control of immigration. It's gone up. Following that experience, he turned his hand to bringing taxes down. And, would you believe it, the tax burden is now going to be higher than ever. It is ironic but he's suddenly taken such a keen interest in Greek culture when he's clearly become the man with the reverse Midas touch. (laughs) Everything he touches turns to... Maybe the Home Secretary could help me out here. Uh, Rubbish. So will the Prime Minister do the country a favour... We'll have to check the tape again, uh, Mr Speaker, I think. So will the Prime Minister do the country a favour, warn us what he's planning next, so we can prepare ourselves for the disaster that will inevitably follow? Mr Speaker, at the beginning of the year, we said... Mr Speaker... Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, at the beginning of the year, we said we would halve inflation, and this government has delivered. Easing the burden on the cost of living for families everywhere. But we know his plans, Mr Speaker. All the way through that, what did he do? Back inflationary pay rises. He talked about welfare, no controls for welfare, and borrowing £28 billion a year that would just make the situation worse. He mentioned tax, Mr Speaker. Just this past week, we've delivered the biggest tax cuts since the 1980s for millions of people and businesses, increased pensions and benefits, and this week secured £30 billion of new investment for this country. So he can keep trying, Mr Speaker, to talk... Oh, oh, pla- can I just say to the Shadow Foreign Secretary, oh, sh- order, just a little bit quieter, please. I want to hear 